Hello everyone, it's me, Wokey here, and I'm here with Zenra. Hello. And we're here for another good old story time with Wokey. It's been a while. Uh, I need to always forget, I don't remember how to properly introduce this, because I say it's always time for another story, but then also the name of this series is called The Day of Life of Wokey. <laughs> so... <laughs> Um, it really it really fucks with my head, and also I said fuck in the beginning, so that's unfortunate. But it's fine. And the the it's big monetization. YouTube, yeah, YouTube isn't um coming after me. You know what they actually did hit for me, by the way. Before we get into my day in the life of story, they hit uh, my D free. This is your videos. It was marked as inappropriate. <laughs> oh, Probably because we talk about that Klondike thing. Oh yeah, the Klondike bar. <laughs> that's a really cool. long time. Whatever, it was worth it. I would rather keep the Klondike <laughs> bar than not have it on there. Okay, so for today's story, I'm going to talk about um, what happened to me about last week. It wasn't a week ago. I don't remember it. It's such a, it was such a flash. This is right around the the time when California was on fire. One of the times California was on fire. I was about to say that doesn't doesn't answer very many questions. No. Uh, but this is the one where the fire actually hit um, close enough. So, um, I believe it was on Thursday night. Yeah, Thursday night I was working, and that's when we heard um, the the fire had started Thursday. I went to work on Thursday, and on the way home with a coworker, um, they were dropping me off in my home. And as we were going through, we noticed like, well, right before we were about to like head off into the into the um, into the night into our cars someone uh someone stops us my the co-worker who specifically drops me off um her husband they'd have two cars i this is a weird setup to be like okay so i went with her in her car to drop me off but her husband also had his own car and was there too point is he showed up and then immediately said like hey a specific part of california is evacuating and also that's really close to us and then we had to stop and look at our phones and go like what because that meant that if one part of this specific part of California was evacuating, that means that we would have to get the orders to evacuate pretty soon. So we checked our phones, saw that nothing was happening. We were like, okay, I guess maybe they're just freaking out, you know, because the fire is close by and we don't know what's going to happen. Um, so we go in the car. We start um, driving. As we get closer and closer to where I live, we see what look we look ahead of us and we're like, is that a bunch of fog? It wasn't fog, it was ash. And it was ash literally so thick that it looked like fog as we were driving through the night. Um, and we knew it was ash because we could smell it through the car with the windows down. At California, it just sounds wonderful. Yeah, again, and uh, someone also, um, I want to say it was uh, Jinta asked me, what caused the fire? So here's the thing, when the winds get heavy... Uh, when the dry winds get heavy in California, nobody knows what starts the fire. Because they're just random brush fires. Anything could start the fire. Last year, what caused the fire was um, a specific power line being hit by something. And that caused a huge fire. And then the winds carried it out. And it, it unfortunately killed a lot more people than um, people were expecting. Because the winds just carried it so hard. And it was just so strong. And no one was ready. And it was like crazy but nobody we knew what happened with that fire but this fire specifically we don't know because it could be anything um in previous years it's been like something like someone decided to play with fireworks and that caused a fire because they're a bunch of fucking idiots because californians don't understand that even though this happens every year don't play with fucking fireworks because it's gonna start a fire <laughs> I don't don't get me started on this because I'm honestly angry that there. It I sounds can, like you have a lot of a lot of pent up feelings about this. Yes. Okay. So it's perfectly fine when a fire starts randomly because of brush fire because I can understand that the winds are so dry and something is like literally like brushing up against it and it's so dry in California already that it causes a fire and then it starts. That's nature. We can't fight nature, so all we can do is fight back. That's a perfectly I guess, in my mind, fair fire. Because that starts from nothing. But when it starts with someone being stupid, like, I... Like, just because someone decided to be like, oh, this would be a real good time to, like, start a campfire in the woods when it's super fucking windy right now. Like, how can you not use any of your common fucking sense? How are we so big and still not half of us are dead because half of these motherfuckers want to kill the rest? 
it doesn't yeah, make, I can see that. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense to me, and it specifically doesn't make any sense to me now. So let's get back to the story. The ash is very heavy, and then lucky for us, where I specifically live is in Chatsworth, and this is both a good and a bad thing. The wind in Chatsworth is super strong. How strong was it that when we got to Chatsworth, the wind had blown the ash away from Chatsworth? <laughs> The wind was oh so, so strong, no ash was hitting Chatsworth. Um, just to give like a, just to try and explain to you how strong the winds are in Chatsworth sometimes. Um, back when I was in high school, a friend of mine who we call Zarbon, on thanks to the Mimi Force, we call him Zarbon. Um, he had a jacket open uh, when it was windy, and uh, Zarbon is about, I, I specifically in high school, he was maybe seventy pounds, five foot. <laughs> So, my God, in high school, he was a very small man, um, very small, really? angry man with long hair. Uh, cool guy though, very cool. Um, so, but the, also angry again. Yeah, yes. when you grow up in Los Angeles, you kind of grow up angry. Like you know, you are the product of your environment in some cases. I can't hold it against. All right, him. fair enough. Um, so uh, the winds were so strong. His jacket was open. The wind blew in Chatsworth. And I saw my friend literally fly into the air like a fucking flying squirrel. And his face, when I saw him, as I saw his feet leave the ground because the wind literally blew him into the air, his face appeared like, what the fuck just happened? My fucking, my feet aren't in the ground anymore. And I saw the, the look of just pure terror and also kind of an amazement in his face for those, for that brief, like five seconds as he flew into the air. I was like, holy shit, dude, you literally just flew into the air. And he was just like, uh, I'm going to close up my jacket now <laughs> because now I know that's a thing I have to worry it about. Catches wind. <laughs> So that's how strong the winds are in Chatsworth. So we make it to Chatsworth. Um, I immediately like, um, so if people were, so I was going to record a video that night for the channel. I want to say around this point, um, I'd already hit over a thousand subscribers. So I was kind of in the mood of just like, I have to keep on putting stuff up, but I also got home from work. So I'm going to give it a little time. I got home from work a little early. So I'm going to give it some time. I'm going to record at three. Um, 3 a.m. just to show you how crazy my upload schedule is sometimes for YouTube. Um, so I wait for 3, it hits around 2.45 and I'm about to start getting ready to record when my mom comes to me to where I keep my computer and says, all right, listen, um, I think you need to go to bed now. Your, your uncle's not in the bed because I share a bed with my uncle and I usually have to wait until um, he's ready to go to work so I can use the bed to sleep myself. Um, he's not in the, in the house now though because uh, he has to go take care of the, he's a, um, I guess the, a horse, what's it called, a horse racer? He'd like, he specifically breeds jockey? horses. Not a jockey, he like breeds horses to, um, um, to race them and stuff like that. So he had to go to, I don't know what they're called, but he had to go to like a farm type situation to look after the horses because also horses are very bad with fire. So he wasn't in the house. So she said, you need to go to bed because we're not sure if we're about to be evacuated because it's not looking good. And I said, okay, I'm going to go to bed then. Um, I go to bed and I think I want to say I start. Well, also that day we had lost power. So I started I started to charge my phone and I said, I'm not going to go to bed until my phone is fully charged. So I think I went to bed around, oh, sorry, excuse me, around 4 a.m. I go to bed uh, around, I want to say six or seven hours later, I'm woken up and said, you need, we need to evacuate. You need to, you need to wake up because it's time to go. They're giving us the signal. There's literally cops outside the house, like blaring out. This is an evacuation. Everyone needs to go. The fire is too close. Um, so I go, oh, holy fucking shit. This is the first. So this is the first thing that comes to mind as I'm getting ready. I can't believe I'm about to lose another house <laughs> because I've already don't have another huh. house. And then this one's about to potentially get hit with fire. This is the thing that comes into your head when you're told fire is coming. Because the worst, the first thing that comes into my head is this is worst case scenario. The second thing that comes into my head is we have about 17 different animals that we need to get out of this house because 
um, uh, there's no way in hell that we're leaving all these animals by themselves in the house. So I wake up, I immediately just, I, I assumed that when I was woken up, they had already prepared and I was the last thing to get ready. So I immediately headed to the car and then sat in the passenger seat, not knowing that everyone was still evacuating. So I'm just an asshole sitting in the car going like, I thought we were ready to go. Turns out, no, we were not ready to go. Jesus Christ. So this, again, I just woke up. So, so give me a break on this one. Um, so they start um, bringing out all the animals. Um, one of our little dogs, a chihuahua named Pandora. I have to take, I'm taking care of her. So I'm putting her in the little, um, do- her little doggy bed. And she's sitting on my lap. And the other dog, Chloe, and um, our, our bird, Sonic, and our two cats, they're put inside. Our three cats are put inside one little, and it's not a little cage, but a cage for them. Sonic has her own cage, and then Chloe is also put into the other car, and then I'm in with Pandora in one car, and at this point, we can't leave. My uncle already left because, um, so my, my, my brother and sister left because they went to go to Burger King um, to quickly get something, and then they couldn't, the cops wouldn't let them come back because they're like, no, you have to evacuate, you have to get the hell out of here. Um, that means there's no coming back. Uh, it was a it, this would this uh, evacuation was not mandatory so they couldn't come back so me and my mom said we can't leave because there's still one other person here who can't leave so the house here is also a farm so there's also a very big dog named um cotton this is the dog that broke into the house one night that's the big dog but there's also pigs and there's also horses and also there's two baby horses uh, so all of them also need to be evacuated, but um, the only people left to evacuate them would be my mom, me, and a very old white man. <laughs> so those are the only people here who can evacuate basically what would have been a bunch of horses, big-ass dogs, pigs, because if it came down to the fact that the fire is actually here, we can't just leave them here. That would be fucked up. Here's another thing, and thankfully we never ran into this problem because it ended up we didn't have to evacuate them. Baby horses aren't trained to go inside the horse stables, the the thing that are like mobile. I don't remember what those things are called, but do you know what little, I'm talking the about? Little, yeah, where like the horse gets towed behind a truck. Yes. So apparently you have to train a baby horse to get on those things because they don't know how to get on it. So my mom was like telling me like, yeah, those baby horses don't know how to get on there. And then I said what are we gonna do with them then she's like (laughs) i don't know we'll we'll figure it out if it comes to it so we we end up sitting around and we're waiting for the fire to in essence get closer at this point we're inside the car and we're basically looking forward we're looking at the sky specifically the ash going like if that fire hits the mountain that means it's time for us to get these animals inside the um inside one of those things because we need to get them out because we can't leave them inside the house you know etc etc um we wait we wait an hour and we're st- and then finally by an hour my sister is able to sneak back into the house <laughs> she's able to put the car she's able to figure out where the cops were specifically looking and then she was able to basically juke them and she's back to where me and my mom are in the second car uh second hour passes and nothing's happening we're kind of waiting as far as we know the fire is still on and but at this point we're starting to get a little bit more lax because as we look into the sky the ashes are kind of going away a bit and we're like okay that's a good sign right and she's like yeah i mean i can still kind of see the fire this way but it's not so bad um and then finally i think another hour passes and we finally get uh the message sent to our phone the evacuation is no longer forced meaning you don't have to evacuate if you can And then finally another hour passes and then finally they tell us the evacuation is called off and we're like we 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 sigh a sign of relief we put all the animals back inside the house that we had uh made sure to save here's a funny thing that happened in hour two as we were waiting my brother went back inside the house and then came back out and my, my mom was like why'd you go back in and then he said i went to go get the switch (laughs) (laughs) we had left the switch behind but two hours in we're like you know what (laughs) let's take the switch real quick let's go get it just in case um we ain't about to go buy another switch and have to deal with the (laughs) the account transfer all over again um 
So yeah, the evacuation was called off. And the reason why, it turned out that the fire was getting farther away from us. It was getting closer, but then eventually it was able to be pushed back. But in years past, it used to be that the fire, like, people didn't used to evacuate until they saw the mountains were on fire. And then it was time to be like, hmm, okay, time to go, everyone. <laughs> the mountain is literally on fire. <laughs> uh, but this year, they decided that they were going to evacuate people way sooner. And the reason is, is because last year was just so bad with the fire. A lot of people were unfortunately killed it didn't need to be killed because the fire just like literally it crept out of nowhere it like it was like it was the fastest fire that had ever burned at that specific point and so so many people were unprepared for the evacuation and california faced a lot of shit for that um as they rightfully should have because it was like how the fuck were we not prepared for this like this happens every year and you want to tell me that we weren't ready this year it happens yeah that's a good point so this year, they did the thing of being overprepared. So they were, in essence, telling people, you need to get the hell out of here right now. And it's like, okay, I listen, we're going to do it because literally last year this thing happened so fast, so we don't know. And it turned out that for our specific area, it was like a little bit too quick. Like maybe they could have waited a little bit to tell everyone to <laughs> evacuate. But again, I think it really is they were put in this situation where it's just like, they doomed it do, fucked if you don't doomed if you're not like no matter what there was no good uh situation for them this is also why some parts of california were forced to go without power because the specific power company that like caused the fire last year they're like uh in order to kind of avoid that again we're just gonna shut off everyone's power and we were like why <laughs> why are you doing this you couldn't think it took you a year and your great solution is how about how, just none of you have power <laughs> like no that's... more electricity that's not a good solution either dude you gotta come up with some better shit especially if we're gonna pay you for doing this so that was kind of my day and also on that day i had some uh stuff i needed to get done for uh so i do some edit stuff on the side for dfree I want to say, like, uh, before, I want to say on Thursday, I told him, I can get this done. And then on Friday, I said, I'm evacuating. <laughs> so it was very quick, like, hey, um, give me a bit. And then, it, of course, because D Free is the coolest dude in the world, he's like, holy shit, make sure you're safe, dude. I don't, I don't care. Just make sure that everything's fine. Sure, you don't fucking die. Yeah, yeah. that's pretty reasonable. I that's think. pretty reasonable. So there you go, and that was a that was a just a hell of a fucking day. I I had to wake up early, and then from that point on, it was just like you know you know that the, one of those days where it feels like you've been awake for a week. Oh. That's what it felt like, and that was also un I also lost my video streak because of that fucking day. So I didn't get to upload my silly gotcha for <laughs> for, for damn one day. California fires. <laughs> yeah. So. There you go. There's a day in my life, specifically. A much more scarier day that I'm able to look back and go like, Hey, it ended up being okay. That doesn't sound great. No, it's never a great thing. And especially for those who specifically actually did lose their house in a fire, then, you know, my heart goes out to them, but uh, that's about it. Just like, yo, heart goes out to them. I hope everything ends up being okay. Fires are fucking dangerous, and California is a weird fucking place where we're more scared of rain than we are of the fire and um, earthquakes. More scared of the rain that you never get than the yeah. fires that you constantly get? Yes, it's because when it rains in California, it turns into Mad Max. No one remembers how to drive. <laughs> <laughs> It's uh, it specifically is like everyone goes like, oh shit, I don't know how to drive in the rain. Maybe I go ninety miles per hour, everything will be fine. And it's like, no, idiot, stop. What are you doing? <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Good state. Great state. And then like a, a fucking uh, a, a, a six point whatever earthquake hits us, and we go, huh? Everyone feel that? <laughs> everyone feel that? It's like, <laughs> how are we okay with that? But then with, the, with a little bit of drizzle, we turn into fucking maniacs on the street. Uh, but there you go. There's my day in the life. I hope you enjoyed that, everyone. <laughs> Thank you for Zen for being here to hear me out. You're welcome. <laughs> 
All right, everyone. You have a nice day out there.